What's up guys, Tony Watts here. I know I look a little crazy today, but that's not what we're here for. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to get flawless skin in your portraits. This is just my way of editing that bounce back and forth between Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. I do the more tedious things in Photoshop, so I'm gonna show you that process in this tutorial. Right now I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC. I've been using it for a while. I, when I first started, I started using Photoshop CS6, so I've been at it for quite a bit. First, open up Adobe Photoshop and import the images that you would like to edit. Now, most people would say this image looks pretty good already, right? But let me zoom in a little bit and we're gonna highlight a few areas that needs to be fixed. Some of the things you may wanna fix is like stray hairs, weird marks or lines that come up out of anywhere, little fine bumps that you may notice on the skin, um, the, the dark color under the eyes, you wanna fix that because you wanna have a balanced, you know, well-balanced skin. You don't want any dark spots, you know, extremely red spots and all that good stuff. You want the skin to look clean and pretty good. If you have any stray hairs along the outside, you wanna get rid of that because you don't want anything that distracts you from the main image. Right, we're gonna fix all of that, so let's grab this layer right here. First thing you wanna do is create a new layer, and what I do is just make a copy of that background layer. So Control J, new layer. For those that don't know, this is what we call editing non-destructively. If you mess up along the way, you can just fix the layer that you want instead of having to start all the way from scratch. Now that we have this layer duplicated, I start out with the patch tool. So you hit the J button. This is where I remove large blemishes quickly. It's not perfect, but with practice, you learn how to take advantage of it. What you wanna do is circle the area that you wanna get rid of and drag it to an area with a similar pattern. Boom. All right, fast forward a little bit. Now we're on to the second part. It's called frequency separation. Now what we're gonna do this layer, we just edited it. We're gonna title that as edit one. You can label it whatever you wanna label it, but let's just keep it easy and call it edit one. Now what you wanna do is copy that layer two more times. So control J, control J, and they give you two more copies. Now what you wanna do is label this top layer texture and you'll see why shortly. This layer immediately underneath, you wanna name that blur. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. All right, the skin looks pretty pretty clean, but we still have to get this, this little mark right here out. And also balance the skin colors, the skin tones, and these dark spots. So let's go to our texture layer and hide that layer. Now we're looking at the blur label. What you wanna do is go to filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you wanna blur this layer. You don't wanna go too overboard or you have some craziness like this, and you don't wanna go too far under or you can't tell what, what's going on. So what you wanna do is blur it just enough that it gets rid of the items that you're trying to remove. So we're gonna hit OK. Now we're gonna to go to the texture layer, bring it back, and now you wanna to go to image, apply image. Now here's the important part. You wanna to go to layer and go to blur, the blur we just made. And then blending, you wanna make sure that's on subtract. If it's on anything else, it's gonna look kind of funky. So you wanna to go to subtract. And that kind of looked like a high pass filter, which essentially that's what it is. But in order to keep it simple, we're gonna to go to apply image. And the computer automatically gen generates the scale and the offset. If not, um, if this is your first time using the apply image, what you wanna do is go set your scale to two and set your offset to 128. How we came up with that number, I don't know. But that's the numbers that you need. So we're gonna hit okay. This texture layer, what you wanna do is go down to linear light and that looks like the exact same image that we had before matter of fact we're going to group this so you want to shift and hold click on blur now Control g it'll group that to know if you did this frequency separation correct what you want to do is group it turn it off and on there shouldn't be a difference between your group and the previous layer it looks exact same so that's how you know you did the frequency separation correctly. All right, now that we have the frequency separation going on, 
these are the two tools you're gonna use between bouncing back between the two layers, between the texture layer and the blur layer. On the texture layer, you wanna use your clone stamp tool to fix any texture inconsistencies like this part right here. And we're gonna fill that in right here with the hair. Um, and you're gonna use your lasso tool for um, all of your color and consistencies. For instance, like right here, you see the, the different kind of spots in her skin to make that blend. You're gonna highlight that. And we're gonna do the process, the, the Gaussian blur again. And what you wanna do is bring up your blur enough to make it blend. You can turn it on and off to see the changes in it. All right, now that we're done blending the skin tones together, we're gonna to go to our texture layer. And on this layer, you wanna use your clone stamp tool. So you wanna hit the hotkey S, and that gives you your clone stamp tool. Up here in the sample drop down, you wanna make sure current layer is selected. And when you come back down, you wanna hold the Alt or Option key and sample a layer somewhere to the side that you can bring over and erase the line. Simple as that. When you're doing your sample, you wanna make sure you get a similar area because if you get somewhere, if you choose somewhere like over here in the hair, you're gonna get that hair texture and you don't want that. All right, now what I do is in between that blur and texture layer, I create a blank layer. I use my brush tool. It's gonna have some inconsistencies in colors, especially if you textured out something that's dark. You wanna sample a color that's nearby and bring down your opacity. I say down to like between 15 and 20. somewhere around that area, and you wanna blend in those colors. All right, now that we've done that layer, we're gonna create another layer. I'm gonna zoom in. And we're gonna clean up these dark spots up under her eyes. What you wanna do is you get it, wanna get a soft rounded brush and do the same thing by selecting sample colors from around the area and just blend those in. All right, now that we're done with that layer, but what I like to do is I group them together and I label them, maybe like skin color balance. And I like to turn them off and on so I can see what changes I've made. And you can see the difference. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna turn those skin edits on and off so you can see the difference. There you have it, but I do like to go in and add a little bit of sharpening to the eyes and features to pull out the image, but that's pretty much all you have to do, and you have flawless skin, as you can see. And I'm going to zoom out again. I'm going to show you a wide shot of the before and after. And I'm going to zoom in, and here's a close-up of the before and after. Before, after. All right, guys, that's it for Photoshop. I do my color grading in Adobe Lightroom. That's easier for me, but hey, to use their own. Make sure you check out the page for my color grading tutorial. If you like this video, make sure you smash the like button. If you learn anything, make sure you comment down below. For more vlogs and tutorials, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the newest videos. Until next time, live life and create.